Hello, Ectosage here on the Sage channel, and we got our beautiful update today, which adds oxygen, as well as a few other little tweaks to different things. And really quickly, before I actually get into a world to start showing it off, I'd just like to point out the fact that if you are in a survival world, you're going to need oxygen to... Well, you're going to need ice to make oxygen. So don't panic if you have an old survival world like we do with Joint Survival. Just go into the edit settings of that good old world. Go to its advanced and down there at the bottom left, you turn this thing on. It gives you this big air message. Are you sure you want to enable oxygen? Doing so will cause materials on untouched asteroids to change. This is a reversible. What it's basically saying there is if there is an asteroid you have not actually mined, you might have seen it, you might have flown by it, but as long as you haven't actually mined it or dented it or changed it in some way so it's saved to your the actual world, this will go ahead, and if we click yes, it's actually going and re-rendering out those asteroids, what's going to be on them. So now any asteroids we didn't touch in that world will now have ice in them as well, or might have ice, so of course the roll of dice. Anyway, let's go ahead and load up our actual test world for this update, shall we? Alrighty, here we are in our fantastic little world. I just deleted that. It was a little pressurized area there that I had for a little bit of testing. You can see that the air was jetting out of that pretty cool stuff. Now, the first thing you're going to need if you're in a survival world and you want to set up an oxygenated environment is you're going to need to go ahead and get your hand drill out. As I just mentioned, you're going to need to go find yourself some ice. And this is what ice looks like right here, this little bit here. You can see it even shows up on your area there. I believe in sorting systems it'll even work as pretty much ore. That's what it will count as. You can see ice. Pretty simple and straightforward. Now once you got yourself ice, or technically you'd have done this before, but it's not going to be useful until you ice, you're going to want to go ahead and build yourself this fangled new machine, an oxygen generator. It's found if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it's right down there, center one, oxygen generator. You're going to want to plop that son of a gun in, and you can see it's even got a little light on it to indicate its current status. Yellow means it's ready to go. Of course, since I'm in creative, I, if I hooked up other things to it, it would actually work right now, but usually you're going to need to go ahead, pop in there, it's got its own inventory, and give it some ice to work with so it can generate oxygen, and then it goes to the green saying, hey, I'm ready to work. Now let's go ahead and pipe this in. I'm building pretty much the same thing you would just seen here a second ago with a little tweak. And we're gonna stick a oxygen container on top of it, or they call it an oxygen tank. So stick that in there. And at the very top, similar to batteries and other things, you can see it's got a four little lights at the top. And as this oxygen generator at the left, now on blue, I believe that indicates it's actually working, is pumping out oxygen. It's pumping it straight into this now, whereas before it wasn't even creating oxygen. It was just ready to go. Now it's actually producing it and sticking it in that container. Now, another thing you can do with this is you can actually go ahead and put in an air vent. Now, you might be thinking, dear Lord God, why did you do that? You've stuck in an air vent. You're going to vent all the oxygen you're producing out in the space. No, don't worry. The air vents are smart. They know that if they're in a sealed room to let oxygen out, and if they're in the great openness of space or exposed to space in some way, to not do so. You don't have to worry about these things just venting your entire oxygen supplier. If you have a whole breach shutting down those vents in a hurry, they're automated systems. You don't got to worry about that, which is pretty nice. Now, of course, this one here is showing a yellow light indicating... It's showing one out of four lights for one, indicating there's currently no oxygen in this area it's in, of course. And that it's yellow, indicating that, hey, I can't fill this area up. It's too big. It's open. It's exposed. Well, what you could go ahead and do is come down here. This is pretty much the same machine. Let's go ahead and power it up. By the way, you don't need the oxygen tank there. I just have that for show. This will out output oxygen straight from the factory if you have it. And I can go ahead and seal this little room off. Let's do that like there. And you can see now... There we go. You can see a little bit of smoke coming. I call it smoke. A little bit of air coming out of that vent. And this little tiny glass box is now pressurized. Now, of course, if we were to depressurize it, you can see it's instantly vented into space. In fact, quite a bit it looked like. But don't worry, it's not pulling from the vent. Remember, it's just that room that we're seeing vented into space. You can also please note when building your sealed off areas, you don't want to use blocks like that at an angle like that because if there's a gap there's a good chance it's not going to fill it in it's like it's like right there you can see it wasn't actually filling it in there's a few other blocks that will work though like this door here you can see that one actually strangely enough works and it pressurizes that room even though very clearly there's a big old gap here and of course we can go ahead and open that and it'll vent everything out it's a damn cool effect too so just keep that in mind there's a lot of stuff that is will prevent it from venting but a few strange things that will actually work like that one i had shown let's see does this work no it doesn't so they were pretty smart about most of these blocks just a few of them like the door that I think they probably have to have work anyway. Please note also, big blast doors, they are not your friend. If we were to go ahead and fly down here to this structure, right here, 
and land, I actually have a bunch of vents in this hallway, and I just press that button to close off a blast door. Now, I originally did have this blast door going a bit more into the wall, so if you see a bit of a gap, I did test it other ways. Actually, no, it looks like it's pretty much a complete seal, but if you look up, no dice. So the only way to get a seal is actually with proper blocks like these here, or doors. So there you go, you can see I've sealed that off now, and the vents up there are pressurizing this whole room. Of course, if you were to take out a window like that, you can see a massive depressurization. Please note, doesn't look like if let's say I have my inertial dampeners off right here and I'm just floating so the room pressurizes, there we go. If we were to remove all this, the depressurization will not apparently push you out. Bit unfortunate, I'd love for it to like, whoop, suck you out there, but no dice on that. Please also note, simple airlock that you can do is one like this, where you have the actual airlock itself right here. You open your door and it depressurizes that way since you're not gonna be pulled out. This thing instantly stops filling the room with O2. It's all good. Please note that you are wasting this little tiny room's worth of O2. So you might not want to do that. And of course I close that door and auto fills it. What you might want to do is have one of these set up. So you press a button and it switches it from pressurize, which is what it's currently doing, to depressurize. And if I could just aim at the bloody control panel, there we go. You can see you have the depressurization button. So if I click that, it'll depressurize this room. Now right now it's not doing so because it doesn't have anywhere to put this oxygen. So if I go out into spectator, you'll actually be able to see that I have these pipes hooked up, flung around back all the way over to just two oxygen generators. So that oxygen that is in that room cannot be pumped out anywhere because it doesn't have anywhere to go. Now let's say we break this pipe. Well, it still doesn't have anywhere to go, does it? This room is still oxygenated. If you look at the bottom right of my screen, you'll see oxygen high. Well, the only way to depressurize a room is to ensure that it can go to a, there we go, an oxygen tank. So we could actually go ahead and put an oxygen tank here. And now it'll actually pump that oxygen out of that room we were in. So if you're going ahead and looking there, you can see oxygen at the bottom right now says none. And this is now indicating one out of those four bars, indicating there's no oxygen in here. The oxygen has all gone up into this storage tank. And we can actually go ahead and look at that tank through the system here. So we'll type in tank or TA, and you can see the tank here. And at the bottom right says it's 0.10% Filled, so it can hold quite a bit and it actually requires energy to I believe input and output But if you lose power, don't worry your tanks not just gonna suddenly vent itself It should still hold it, but you can't go ahead and tell it the stockpile So right now if we were to go ahead and look back up at this vent We can go ahead and tell it to hey stop depressurizing and it'll automatically just say, oh I'll do my normal thing and put oxygen back in here and of course we're gonna switch it back again and back and forth and all that stuff. And you see it's vent now venting it out. The oxygen actually goes flowing back the other way. Pretty damn cool effect. But if we were to go ahead and access that tank again, and instead of letting that tank do its usual push-pull thing, where if you have an oxygen generator, it's generating oxygen, it's putting out and it's pressurizing your rooms, and it's pressurizing any tanks you have. That way, once you're out of ice to make more oxygen, if you need more oxygen for a room, it can just pull it from the tanks. Well, you can set this to stockpile. And it won't just be able to pull from the tank. So now if we were to go ahead and tell this bugger to go ahead and repressurize this room, it physically cannot because it's actually, well, because that tank's now seal itself off. It's being a greedy little bastard. Anyway, let's go ahead and hop out here. We can go ahead and depressurize this whole thing if we want. Pretty damn cool to see that happen. Just for the heck of it, why not? Of course, you wouldn't want to do that on your actual ship because you just would have just wasted all the oxygen filling that whole huge room there. Please note also, I do have that huge cube over there. Point of that cube is, well, pretty simple and straightforward. You can probably guess. It's a test bed to see if I could fill up a huge, huge room full of oxygen. Well, congratulations world, I cannot. As you see, I've just put in a billion and one oxygen generators. I'm putting in a bunch of vents on top of them. And they will of course go red instantaneously because I do not have power in this room. But if I was to go ahead and put in quite a few large reactors, oops, if I can actually place them there. There we go, placed them in. Instantly we're getting mountains and mountains of lag. There we go, it's lit up a bit. Up oh, and game's frozen again. You can see these are still set to red though. I don't quite know why, but it will not fill up this room. I'm assuming there is just a natural limit to it, so it's not letting me fill it up. And of course the game keeps freezing now. I'm assuming it's trying to figure it out, but because none of these are changing color, I'm assuming it'll never work. And given the fact that it is lagging, probably not the best thing to try. And anyway, let's go ahead and delete this before it causes a massive crash or something nightmarish like that. There we go, come on, I've pressed yes. Come on now, 
There we go. So no more big mega cube structure that's trying to fill up with air. And I did fly around the edges. It was sealed off. So nothing like that. What else do we have in this update? Well, I should be pointing out also that if we were at back at this machine to have placed a cube right there, presumably blocking off this small area right in here that could be pressurized. Well, you'll notice that, of course, the lights aren't changing. That's because the small area that the small cube area that the vent occupies cannot be pressurized in and of its own. In fact, if we were to go ahead and fly right through here, you can see we have two doors within each other, or I say within each other, in this tiny little space. This area right here cannot be pressurized on its own either. If we were to open this door, and I'll actually go ahead and uh, bring my character over there really quickly. Come on, get over that character. I believe it was one of these up here that I was at. Yeah, it was definitely this one, I think. Up, uh, give it some power, there we go. So if we were to go through this door, land here, come in here, no oxygen, open this door, and low oxygen and high oxygen. So there we go. So theoretically, we should be able to now close this door in this room. It's full of oxygen. We should be good to go, right? Well, unfortunately, as soon as I close that door, it doesn't hold its oxygen. Now, of course, if we were to go ahead and let's get out of here, delete that. Actually, we're going to have to move that because the gravity or the actual generator doesn't have a good seal around it. So it, that wouldn't really work. But if we're to do something like this now and put in all of that, it's basically the same thing as that other room we were in earlier where it will pressurize this room. There we go. And it should actually stay. Actually, no, it's not keeping it pressurized. I really don't understand that at all. It's no, I really don't understand that. It should keep it pressurized just like the other one. It currently seems that there's something weird about the vents, not actually, if there's not a vent in a room, it's like it won't stay pressurized, even though clearly this room should have oxygen in it. Once the door closes, it doesn't. And which is even odder when you come over to some of these strange things I have over here, where I have this little box right here with oxygen inside it. In fact, it's got the whole working setup. And then I copy and paste it here, deleted the machinery and put in just that one vent and all of a sudden it works. It says, hey, there's oxygen in there. If I copy and paste this, it says there's oxygen in there. Even though the machine wasn't ever in, isn't in there anymore. And I delete that and voila, the whole thing depressurizes. So it's a bit strange that, and in fact, if we were to go ahead and place that, so theoretically to test out our theory, you can see, oh, we have oxygen. Let's go ahead and delete that. We delete a wall. Oh clearly still has oxygen. So I really don't understand why when we have those two doors with a gap inside of them that thinks that one spot cannot possibly be pressurized. It's very, very odd. Uh, let's actually go ahead and copy it one last time, paste it there, fly over here, delete that, copy and paste it again, delete that, aha. So if there's no vent in there, it does not eat, save the oxygen information for the area. So just watch out for that. You gotta have a vent in every room you want to be pressurized or trouble happens, my friends. Uh, what else do we have? I believe I already mentioned this. No, I didn't. Stone. Unfortunately, our joint survival base will not be able to be pressurized because this stone does not hold oxygen in there. It's only with blocks. You can see clearly this thing wants to fill the room up. We have everything. We're sealed off with the stone, but no dice. It will not pressurize this room, unfortunately. Bit of a letdown. Other things with today's update that do not pertain to oxygen. Well, we'll get to those in a second. We got one last important thing to show that I just about forgot about. And that involves us going to the medical station, clicking on that, and then clicking suit no helmet. This is not a mod. This is actually a real thing that's in the game now. You can walk around without your helmet. Unfortunately, it isn't like pressing I and you click and drag it and take it off and put your in your inventory or something cool like that. You actually have to go to the medical bay, which is a bit silly. But it is pretty damn cool that you can now take off your helmet and see your character's face, which I think is probably the same face from Medieval Engineers, is it? No, I think that character has, uh, his beard's actually made out of little cards, I think. This guy's beard looks to be a single textured piece of actual material. Anyway, but it's pretty cool that you can now see your character's face, and it's kind of cool that he has a beard too. Of course, if you're in survival mode and you were on a platform such as this and you had just removed your helmet by going to a medical station and changing that the other skin, well, you'd be dying. In fact, you'd be dying pretty quickly because you need to be in an oxygenated environment to survive. I'm assuming that your energy levels will not drop at all when you're in an oxygenated environment without your helmet on, so that's probably one of the main pluses there. Even if there is no other purpose, I am going to be making sure all of my ships have pressurized oxygen just because I love the idea of having pressurized ships, having all that stuff set up correctly and properly. And I now just hope to God we see food, because I want my space farms, god dang it. Anyway, two little things before I 
close this video down. One is this wonderful little block here in front of me. And if we were to go ahead and click into it, oh, wait, I know this block. This is the conveyor sort of, uh, that we've seen in the previous update. This damn glorious thing that lets those of us who are incapable or unwilling to program actually be able to sort our stuff by having these blocks. Well, in the previous update, you will know that we had the connector block as well as the catcher block. So you basically spit stuff out and caught it, which was a sort of silly way to do things. And the devs agree. In fact, the devs were probably the ones to say it first when they were making it and went, well, we'll deal with this next week because they've added a drain all button right here. So what that does is you can see we have all this stuff right here in this left crate and zip, not, not a nothing in this right crate. And if we were to go ahead and access this thing, we can still have our blacklist or whitelist or whatever. Well, we can go ahead and turn on drain all and it will be taking all the stuff out of there that isn't blacklisted and putting it in here. And you can even see it moves it actually to the conveyor sorter and then into here. It's pretty cool that you can actually see the what the conveyor has in it. And of course, if we wanted, we could make a nightmare loop where it'll always be pulling this stuff out and trying to put it back into the same crate again. Uh, by doing that right there. In fact, we don't even need a crate there, but whatever. Point is, now we have created a nightmare cycle where forever and ever, yeah, stuff is going into and out of the conveyor sorter and trying to move it into that right crate. Of course, we don't really want that, do we? So let's delete that. You can see everything from it. Inside it falls to the ground. Pretty cool stuff. Other thing is laser antennas. Antennae, however you want to say that. Well, that was actually added in the previous update, but the devs mentioned it in their video, and I'm still not going to actually build something to show it off. But you can now lock those antenna systems so they will actually only connect to one thing. So you connect to them, you tell them to lock, and you will no longer be able to override one of their targeting systems by just having another one say, hey, connect to that one over there. They'll actually stay connected. So that's a pretty cool safety feature. Anyway, that's it. I decided to run into my nice little room here uh, with a few little bugs like this right here where that's actually just a piece of metal there but it's a see-through <laughs> it's a glitch anyway that's that for this update it's pretty cool this is my little safety room i like it a lot from the inside and drink anyway guys thanks a bunch for watching and i shall see you next time ta-ta farewell auf wiedersehen